Hi everyone, so I am indeed wrapped in a bunny blanket. Um, <laughs> it might be June, but I'm freezing and I somehow managed to get a summer cold, so I'm not feeling very good. Um, but I really wanted to get this video filmed today, so yeah, there's that. It has been a long time since I did a Q&A with Chloe and a lot of things have changed um, in my life since the last time I did a Q&A video so I thought that I would um, film one now. Um, I asked on Facebook for questions um, and I got quite a few so yeah, I will answer them for you now. Zoe asks, what is your favourite planner that you use and what planner do you suggest to use when starting out as a uni or a college student? My current favourite planner that I use is my Erin Condren Life Planner. I really like the layout, I like the vertical layout and I like the morning, day and night um, aspect of it. In terms of what planner to use um, as a university or a college student, it just depends what sort of style you like and the way that you plan um, and I used um, just like a normal diary kind of thing when I was at uni. I didn't even use planners um, in my like first and second year of uni really. I used um, just like I said just normal spiral bound diaries as far as I can remember and I used them when I was at college too. It's only really um, since last year as I was going into my third year of uni that I started using Filofax style planners so it's honestly just whatever works for you. Naomi asks, how did you and your partner meet? So by my partner she means my boyfriend Will. Um, we actually met online, on an online dating site. I remember he asked me like a funny question or something in his first message, so I was like, I'll give him a chance and two years later we're still together, so. And Naomi also asks, does your partner scrapbook? No, he does not. He's not into anything creative. Then she asks, what are some cheapy options for a newbie scrapbooker? Um, I really don't know the answer to this question because I'm not, um, I'm not one of those people who like upcycles stuff and reuses stuff and, and like finds the cheapest way to do things. All of my money pretty much goes on scrapbooking and books. Um, so if I want something for scrapbooking, I'll just buy it. Like I, I will shop around and see like the cheapest place to buy it, but I'm not good um, at like cheapy options for scrapbooking because if I want it, I will just buy it. And finally she asks, when did you start scrapbooking? So I was scrapbooking in the loosest sense of the word. Like even when I was a child, I would have tickets and um, memorabilia and stuff like that and I would stick it all into a notebook and um, and keep it so I was doing that sort of thing when I was really little um, and then it wasn't until I was I think I was 11 or 10 I started putting together like a proper scrapbook um, of my whole life and then I kind of gave that up when I went to um, secondary school and college and then it wasn't until 2012 or 2011 when um, I broke up with my boyfriend who I'd been, t been with for two years. I broke up with him and um, during that time I was like really low and I got very, very ill and I was in and out of hospital all the time and I just needed something to focus on so I decided to start scrapbooking again and I put together all of the albums that I have now um, and it's what I call like proper scrapbooking. Vanessa asks, why do you scrapbook and what do you do with them slash how do you store them when they're full? The reason I scrapbook is because I worry about technology and I, don't get me wrong, I love the internet obviously, I make YouTube videos. Um, and I love social media and everything, but the thing that makes me really sad about the internet is that everyone is so quick to put things on Instagram or to upload photos to Facebook and things, but they don't actually do anything with their photos other than that. And I always think like, what if one day all of the social media shuts down and everyone loses all of those photos that, I, that they had uploaded and like never backed up? So. I scrapbook because when I'm older and I have children and technology is completely different to how it is now because we know that it will be, I mean if you think back to when you were a kid how different things already are now, like by the time I am an old lady, um, 
things are going to be completely different. So we might not have access to that technology, but we will have access to scrapbooks that I made, you know, throughout my life. So that is why I scrapbook and I honestly truly believe that it is so important to print your photos and even if you don't want to put them in even if you don't want to scrapbook them print them off and put them in albums because it's so worth it like seeing how happy it makes my family to flick through my albums that's all worth it you know I love doing it anyway but bringing like happiness to other people and knowing that I'll always be able to access these memories and my children and grandchildren will be able to see you know, what I was doing when I was 20, that makes me really happy. In terms of what I do with them when the, um, they're full, I have a Kallax unit from Ikea, it's just one of the ones that has four cubes, um, and two cubes are currently full of scrapbook. Yeah, it is gonna be a problem eventually, I'm gonna have so many that I'm gonna run out of space, but I'm just gonna keep doing it anyway, <laughs> I'm not gonna stop. Hannah says, what are your planner or scrapbook items that you can't live without? Um, for scrapbooking, I have several things that I use on pretty much every layout, and that is enamel dots, tiny word stickers, wood veneer, and washi tape, because washi tape is just the best. And for planning, um, I don't really, since I've used my Erin Condren, I don't really decorate it as much anymore. I use um, specific stickers for specific things and they are from um, Ellie Beth Designs on Etsy. Stephanie says, when you were at university, how did you make notes and how did you organize them? Well, <laughs> I must admit, taking notes at uni was not my forte. The way university works for most people I think is that you have a certain amount of modules that you get to choose and then you have a certain amount of modules that you have to do and the ones that you have to do are always absolutely mind-numbingly boring and it was really difficult to pay attention in those lectures and I often didn't take any notes at all and then it would be the end of the week and I would have to go online um, to my university's um, website and find the presentations and find the lecture slides because I haven't taken any notes um, but in terms of the lectures that I did enjoy um, and the ones that I had chosen myself um, I honestly just like copied a lot of what was on the um, on the lecture slides and to organize them I just had a folder with dividers in it um, for each class um, this is why I never did a video like um, being organised at uni or like study tips because I just didn't do anything. Lucy says, do you prefer traditional scrapbook layouts or project life and what are your reasons for your preferences? Um, so I prefer the look of traditional scrapbook layouts but I prefer the ease and the um, options that you have with project life. So I do a weekly project life album this year. I've done it for the last two years um, or this year will be my second full year so it'll be like two and a half years um, and I've always done it monthly beforehand but now I do it weekly and I must admit I love being able to look back through every week so I prefer that you can get lots more photos lots more stories um, into one album with Project Life but I think that 12 by 12 layouts are absolutely beautiful and I have been doing a lot more of them lately um, since I subscribed to Like Forever. And then Zoe asked another question and she said what was your first planner and how did you find your love for all things stationery and scrapbooking? Like I said I used to have just normal spiral bound diaries and everything so I always had a ton of those but my first proper um, like Filofax style planner was from Paper Chase and I bought it last year in May maybe I actually recently sold it so I can't show it to you but um, it worked for a little while and then I figured that I preferred a5 size and after that it never really got used so that's why I decided to sell it in terms of how I found my love for all things stationery and scrapbooking I didn't really find it it's just always been there ever since I was a tiny little kid I've loved stationery and like cutting and sticking and all that sort of thing and um, my parents loved to tell the story of when I was about four um, it was my birthday and my parents pretended that my only birthday present was a pencil and apparently I was absolutely like beside myself I was so happy that I just had this pencil so I think that goes to show that I've always loved 
stationery and yeah, it's just always been there. And then Anna from Mrs. Brimbles um, says, what made you choose an Erin Condren planner over anything else and why? Um, I honestly just bought an Erin Condren because they were so hyped. That's why I bought one because I just wanted to try it out and I'd wanted to try them ever since I first saw them on um, Jennifer Ross's channel when she was still called Organised Like Jen. I could never justify the price. Um, and then recently, before they launched the new range of planners, um, they reduced all of their old ones to $30 um, and I managed to get my planner and some personalised stickers for £30 including um, shipping so that was a great deal and I just really wanted to try one out and honestly it was just the hype that made me want one. Now that I've actually got one though, um, I really love it. When I did my unboxing video I said that I didn't think they were worth the money and everything and a lot of people really jumped on that. They were like, it's so nice to see an honest review of Erin Condren. Like, they took it as if I was being really negative, but I'm really not. I love my Erin Condren. I'm debating buying a new one for next year because um, I've got quite a bit of referral credit now thanks to you guys using my referral link. Um, so yeah, I, I actually really like the planner and I probably would get another one. Okay, so some of these questions have actually already been answered, um, such as Michaela um, asked, how did you first begin getting into scrapbooking and Project Life? And like I said, I already answered that. I'd always been a scrapbooker ever since I was little. Um, but Project Life, I guess, was kind of different. Um, I discovered it in 2012, in my first year of university. And my album for 2012 is filled with mainly 12 by 12 layouts because that's just what I was doing at the time and um, I obviously was in my first year of uni and I really wanted to um, capture more of my daily life and more of what life was like living away from home in university halls um, and I discovered Project Life through YouTube I think, it probably was through YouTube um, and I thought, yes, that is what I'm going to do. Um, but I, I'm kind of funny, I didn't want to start it mid-year or anything, so I decided to wait till 2013 and I started doing it in 2013. Kylie asks, what are your plans now that you're graduating? Um, <laughs> you know that scene in Friends where like Phoebe's laying on the floor and they say like, do you have a plan or what's your plan? And she's like, I don't even have a plot. That is how I feel about this question. <laughs> um, I don't have a plan, I really don't. Um, everything was kind of thrown up in the air because obviously my boyfriend bought a house and um, I'm moving in there with him when it's done. And so I don't have the luxury of being able to um, just hang around my parents' house for a year. Yeah, like the, the plan at the moment is just to get a job and start earning money and then maybe in the future I can go back and do some of the things that maybe I wanted to do. Um, but at the end of the day, regardless of whether my boyfriend had bought the house or not, I would have been having to find a job now anyway. And um, I'm so excited about the house. Like, it's, it's really exciting. It's stressful, but it's amazing and it's gonna be great. Jessica asks um, where I get my inspiration for, from for scrapbooking and Inspiration comes from everywhere really. I don't really need much like inspiration for Project Life because I kind of just go with what I already know that I like and sometimes I'll see a spread that I particularly like and I might sort of take some inspiration from it but for 12 by 12 scrapbook layouts I get a lot of my inspiration um, not necessarily from YouTube videos because I think a lot of those people are like pros at scrapbooking and I just can't do some of that stuff but um on a lot of the groups that I'm in, so I'm in um, a group run by Susie um, from Sue's Fish on here, which is a lovely group, um, and everyone on there is so talented, and I get inspiration from their posts, and the Like Forever scrapbook kit, the subscribers to that kit have their own Facebook group, and in there people post pictures all the time, and I get a lot of inspiration from that. Um, other than that there's like places like Pinterest and Instagram um, where you can get a lot of inspiration if you search for it um, but yeah. Then she asks whether I scrapbook each week or whether I scrapbook just when I get the chance. 
I order my photos online, so I scrapbook pretty much whenever I have photos, which used to be sort of like every few weeks, but um, now it's more often because I've finished uni and I'm looking for a job and everything, so I'm able to scrapbook a lot more often. But when I say I scrapbook weekly, I mean that I scrapbook like week by week, so in my current Project Life album it says like week one, week two, week three, week four, etc, etc. So that is how my scrapbook is formatted, but I don't necessarily scrapbook every week. Finally, she asks when we're planning on moving into our new house, and the answer to that is honestly like the end of this year, <laughs> um, maybe not even then, I just don't know. Um, if you've watched the moving vlogs, you'll see that it is a complete empty shell at the moment, um, there's nothing there, so even if we wanted to move in at the moment, we couldn't. So those were all the questions that I was asked this time round, there were a lot of scrapbooking ones this time. Um, if you have any more, let me know, I always reply to all of my comments on my recent videos, unless you you've got Google Plus, so if you don't get a reply from me it'll be because you don't have Google Plus so I can't reply to you, um, but I always thumbs it up so that you know I've seen it, um, but yeah, I will see you next time guys, bye!